at the National Association of Farm Broadcasters Trade Talk in Kansas City. I'm Joe Gangwish. We're at the CME booth and we're going to visit with David Widmar. David, of course, works with us with Ag Economic Insights on the Rural Radio Network. You also do some work with the CME group as far as the uh, Ag Economic Barometer. You're excited about what's happening with that. But Dave, I want to start with, first of all, what everybody's talking about is the presidential election and everybody's kind of speculating on what's going to happen with trade. What do you think? Yeah, trade is uh, was one of the talking points for both candidates all all summer and all fall about uh, TPP and their stance on trade and where we're going to go with trade. Uh, trade's huge for agriculture. Uh, about a third of all of our, our U.S. value of ag production leaves as bulk ag exports. Uh, so it's a huge part of where our markets go. That's very important for soybeans, for example. Uh, and our big three trade partners are Canada, China, and Mexico. Uh, together, they're 44% of our exports in agriculture. So the conversation about trade is going to be really critical for agriculture to keep an eye on that and keep the, an eye on the ball uh, as we move through uh, the next six months and a year. And, and this big story in ag has been the growth in trade for those partners. They were at 20% collectively in 1990. Uh, so where do we go in the next 10, 15 years? Do we stay flat? Do we grow those relationships or do we see a pullback in uh, trade partnerships? Yeah. Even, you know, you look at trade and you mentioned how important it is for agriculture. Even if, say, under a Trump presidency, we, we try to do some renegotiation, that causes a lot of uncertainty, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, trade's very complicated because it's not only our relationship with the buyers, but it's also our relationship with the other suppliers. And so and when you start to renegotiate some things, uh, it has a domino effect and a ripple effect that, that transcends uh, it, the countries that are talking directly. So we, uh, we're going to keep an eye on this, uh, and we're gonna, uh, it's going to be important for agriculture, and producers uh, are going to have to really uh, make sure that their voices and their concerns are heard. David, obviously, uh, you, you work with Purdue University as well. We've talked about that, and you've put together this Ag Economic Barometer. And let, let's talk about something that you've seen here on the latest one concerning livestock. Yeah, so uh, we saw in October our latest results. Sentiment dropped a little bit. But when we dive into the specific data, we actually asked uh, how producers feel about the next five years in crop production and the next five years in livestock production. And specifically, we asked, do you think there'll be good times financially? And for the last 12 months, we had saw livestock having a, holding an edge over crop production, so more optimism in livestock, but that faded last month, and actually a higher optimism in crops than in livestock. Now, we're talking about like 30 to 40 percent of respondents saying they think it'd be good times. So overall, it's it's a it's a, it's a bad time in agriculture. But this tri this this inverse of the relationship between crops and livestock. What we've really been seeing this fall as cow-calf prices have fallen and really the, the hope for a rebound is, is fading and the uh, economic and financial situation for those producers has, has turned uh, pretty uh, sour the last few months. Let's wrap up by talking about a, another graph that you have. Very interesting on where producers think corn prices will be in 2017. Yeah, so we've always trying to understand the drivers. What are people thinking about uh, when they think about sentiment? What, what, what impacts that? So we asked about the July 2017 futures contract. And when we asked producers, do you think that corn prices will rally above $4 a bushel between now and next summer? Uh, 30, a third of them uh, said yes, I think it'll go above uh, $4. So uh, that's important when you think about marketing plans and, and how producers are planning their financial situation uh, going through the winter. On the other side of the corn, we asked how many thought corn futures for July would fall below $3 a bushel. A quarter of producers said they thought that would happen. So we really have this uh, bimodal situation where there's a group, a third of producers who have some optimistic uh, expectations or hopes for the futures market in corn. And we see another group that's almost the same size, a quarter of producers who have some pretty pessimistic outlooks for where the corn market's going to go. And similar results in soybeans as well. David Widmar with Purdue University. He's also with the CME Group that helps put together the Ag Economy Barometer for them. And, of course, David works with us on Ag Economic Insights, which you can hear on the Rural Radio Network as well. From Trade Talk going on in Kansas City, I'm Joe Gangwish.